Let's have a look at this case, which is an example of the application of the tort of interference with contractual relations. That tort is also commonly called the tort of inducing breach of contract. This decision of the Ontario Court of Appeal, called Juillard and Kojiko Cable, involved a, a, a gentleman by the name of Mr. Juillard, who was a cable and fiber optic installer. He had worked for Kojiko Cable for quite a while in the Windsor area up until 1999 when he resigned and took employment in the U.S. When he returned to Canada in 2001, he came back to the Windsor area and he, and he accepted a job with a company called Mastec. Mastec was a cable industry contractor and one of its main, one of its main clients was, was Kojiko. When Kojiko found out that Mastec had hired Juillard, uh, Kojiko told Mastec that uh, that they would not allow Juillard to work on any of its projects. Then Mastec told Mr. Juillard, you know, we can't have you working on the Kojiko projects. Uh, the only option is to allow, is to get you to work on other projects uh, farther away in London or Kitchener. Mr. Mr. Juillard, you know, could not, because of his family commitments, could not accept that alternative assignment. And that employment offer was, was revoked. Then several months later, Mastec hired Mr. Juillard again and, and, and assigned him again to a project involving Kojiko. And again, Kojiko told Mastec that they wouldn't allow Mr. Juillard on, to work on any of its equipment. And that caused Mastec to terminate Mr. Juillard's employment. Because of this situation, uh, Mr. Juillard was, under, was unable to obtain any employment with any other Windsor cable industry contractor due to all the, the rumors that swirled arising from, from this incident with, with Kojiko. The legal issue that we'll focus on in this case has to do with whether or not Kojiko induced Mastec to breach its employment contract with Juillard. In other words, did Kojiko commit the tort of interference with contractual relations? Please note that the court also considered another legal issue, which was whether, whether or not Kojiko committed the tort of unlawful interference with economic relations. We will focus only on the part of the judgment that discusses the tort of inducing breach of contract, also known as interference with contractual relations. The court set out the requirements for the tort of inducing breach of contract, which is also called again the tort of interference with contractual relations. So to, to prove that tort, the court said that four elements had to be proven. First, Mr. Girard had a valid and enforceable contract with Mastec. Second, Kojiko was aware of the existence of that contract. Third requirement was Kojiko intended to and did procure the breach of the contract. And lastly, the fourth requirement, as a result of the breach of contract, Mr. Girard suffered damages. In, in applying that, those legal requirements to the facts of this case, the court, with respect to the first requirement, you know, said that there's no dispute that Mr. Girard was hired uh, in, in May of 2001 and did have a valid and enforceable employment contract with Mastec. So that first requirement of having an actual contract is met. The second requirement, Koji Code had acknowledged that it was aware of the contract between Mastec and Juillard. So that satisfies, satisfies the second requirement that Kojiko actually knew of the contract between Mastec and Juillard. So moving on to the third, the third requirement. The third requirement is that Kojiko must have intended to cause the breach of contract between Mastec and Mr. Juillard. In coming to the conclusion that, that uh, Kojiko did intend to cause the breach of contract, the court looked at the findings, the factual findings uh, from the trial. So there's a whole list of six different facts that, that were found at trial, which the appeal court used to support the conclusion that there was an intention to cause a breach of contract. 
the last element is that there that is that Mr. Girard must have suffered damages uh, with arising from the the uh, in the breach of contract, and and the court here, the appeal court here, accepted the trial court's conclusion that Mr. Girard did suffer damages. He specifically he did he wasn't able to find a job uh, in his field of expertise in in the Windsor area, and he had to accept other uh, lower paying employment. Let's recap the legal requirements for the tort of interference with contractual relations. So the first requirement has to do with knowledge. The defendant had to actually know about the existence of a contract between the plaintiff and a third party. The second requirement has to do with intention. The defendant intended to cause the third party to breach the contract. The third requirement is cause. The defendant actually caused the third party to breach the contract. And the fourth requirement is loss. The plaintiff suffered a loss from the breach of contract. So this, this tort typically arises when one company is trying to lure away employees or customers of another company.